大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王。Everybody knows that I'm not a news anchor. Just look at me. But on occasion, I do cover some news, especially when it comes to China or other things I care about. In reality, I'm a commentator. I weigh in with my opinion from time to time. But my opinion is just that—my own opinion. A real news agency wouldn't hire someone like me. I look like a bum. I've always assumed I'd be outclassed by the professionalism of all those around me. But imagine my surprise when I discovered, quite accidentally, that I was wrong all along. It turns out some news agencies will hire literally anyone right off the street. I'm talking, of course, about Australia's ABC News. I've known a great variety of people in my life, and it's always interesting to witness those rare moments when social classes intermingle. In the West, one fancy rich upper class person out of a hundred has the heart and interest to befriend a lower class person. Other places, I'm not sure the ratios. In my eyes, there needs to be more of this: the president and some guy like me hanging out together, maybe going to watch a movie. That's such a wonderful dream, and that's all it has ever been. Until now, recently I stumbled upon a video by ABC News Australia called "China Watch: Never Telling the Whole Truth." I can tell from the title that they're gonna expose me to the fact that China's never telling the truth. Can't wait for that. Every other country tells the whole truth all the time, but China, never. But what does this have to do with low-class people and bums? We'll get there. So what is this video? Let's take a look. See the difference. That's the motto of China's global news network CGTN. But seeing the difference comes with a catch. Comes with a catch. Ooh, scary. Okay, so this is a video about CGTN. You know, the foreign-facing China news network. It's under the CCTV umbrella. About which this video says China Central Television. Which claims to be the world's largest television network, and it's at the forefront of a sophisticated global campaign. Beijing is training up foreign journalists, buying up space in overseas media, and expanding its own networks on an unprecedented scale in an effort to disrupt what it perceives to be Western hegemony over global media. Okay, wow, that's a lot already. First of all, why did you say CCTV claims to be the world's largest television network? I mean, can't you just figure out if that's true or not? Why are you putting it on the viewer to just be forever in mystery as to if they're lying? Oh right, you want us to feel like they could be lying. I see what you did there. Then you say that CCTV is part of a global campaign to put out the Chinese message to the world. Of course, you make it sound nefarious. They're buying up space in overseas media. You mean like how 100% of every international news company in the world does? Right, and to put this into perspective, ABC, let's take a look at I don't know ABC's foreign presence. Australia has a population of 25 million, or just a little bit smaller than the city I live in. That's right, your entire country doesn't even have as many people as the city that I live in. Yet your news network, ABC, has presence not just in Australia, but also in Beijing, Jakarta, London. Nairobi, Port Moresby, Tokyo, Washington D.C., Beirut, New Delhi, and Jerusalem. You have programs in English, Mandarin, Indonesian, Vietnamese, Khmer, and Tok Pisin, and even broadcasts in Europe and North America. I mean, the political message of ABC has an extremely wide reach, considering you have almost no one living in your country, don't you think? But anyway, back to your complaint about how a news agency of 1.5 billion people is overreaching for coverage. You say CCTV is challenging what it perceives as Western hegemony over global media. So you're saying that they perceive that, but it's probably not true. All right, great. So they're wasting their time and money. You're saying that there is no real point to go global for them because their views. Are accurately represented already. Awesome. Hey, do me a favor and remember that you said that, okay? But again, what does any of this have to do with hiring bums? 
I'm Sean Mantesso, and this is China Watch. <laughs> you see, I was wrong. All these years, I thought my tattoos, my unrefined look, they were holding me back. And all the while, ABC was literally hiring any old homeless guy off the street and calling them reporters. The video goes on to introduce the fact that some non-Chinese people work at CGTN. Just sort of a boring, intern-produced video. But then the fun begins. Oh my god, is this horror movie music? I feel terrified, but what's this big scary thing coming? I would say many of them are willing collaborators. For practical reasons, for you know, because the pay is really good. Or for many other reasons. I'm sorry, did I miss something? Was there a crime here? What are these reporters collaborating on exactly? They must love the party, protect the party, and closely align themselves with the party leadership in thought, politics, and action. Without any context, ABC just throws this quote up and makes it seem like the Chinese president is expressly telling CGTN to align themselves with the government. But actually, once you realize the fact that CCTV is a massive, massive company and CGTN is a tiny little part of that company, the picture starts to change. Doesn't it seem a little more likely to you that he's talking to the 99.9% .9 of CCTV that deals with China, rather than the 0.1% that deals with the rest of the world? What he's saying is nothing exciting or controversial in China. He's telling CCTV to remain closely aligned with the government on its strategies. And also, keep in mind, CCTV is not just a news company. And the strategy of the government is pretty important when you're talking about the stability of an entire nation. For something called China Watch, the hippie guy in your video doesn't seem to have paid much attention to China. Chinese media and many parts of the government are concerned with various things. One of those things is to keep the nation, in fact a huge part of the world, stable, happy, peaceful, prosperous, and growing. There's a huge conversation to be had here when it comes to how we're seeing the Western bonds breaking due to social media and so-called news agencies. A big discussion. but. That's for another video. For the sake of this video, just know this. ABC's point here is that China is scary because the government news agency will tend to agree with the government on things. Oh, and totally unrelated question. ABC, remember when your news company caused a controversy with emails about the firing of Emma Aberici? You know, firing based on what was reported by Aberici did not agree with the government? I mean, it was just a few months ago. That's weird. Why would ABC care about what the Australian government wants? Oh, probably because ABC is owned by the Australian government. So let me get this straight. Your scary horror music video is because CCTV is owned by the Chinese government, tends to agree with the Chinese government's position on things, and has a foreign presence. ABC, on the other hand, is owned by the Australian government, tends to agree with the Australian government's position on things, and proportionately has a much larger foreign presence. Okay. And did anyone else notice this disgusting background? What kind of slimy fascist sicko would use the Japanese imperial flag spinning behind the Chinese flag? What are you trying to say, Sean Manteso? Don't hide behind genocidal fascist flags. Just come out with your views. This is the guy you have making a video series called China Watch? A guy promoting war crimes against China? ABC Australia, are you f***ing serious? Okay, I'm back. Carry on. And a central tenet of Beijing's media strategy has been the repudiation of Western journalistic values. You're sort of not getting the point here. What they're saying, not to you, but amongst themselves, seems to be that there's a problem with how the West is controlling the entire global discussion, and there needs to be more viewpoints represented, including that of the government of China. Not just the government of Australia, or the UK, or America. And then there's another sort of intern quality montage attempting to demonstrate that CCTV or China or the Chinese government has a problem with Western media. They seem to be indicating that Western media is biased. And here we go. Possibly the most self-unaware 
biased and revealing thing ever published anywhere. Keep in mind while you watch this next clip that the name of this video by ABC is China Watch Never Telling the Whole Truth. Are you ready for this? Listen to what CGTN's Liu Xin has to say about Western media. That has been the fallacy of the Western media when it comes to reporting on China. Not lying, but never telling the whole truth. Oh my god, the irony! ABC, you're taking a clip of Liu Xin saying that you're biased because you don't lie, but you don't tell the whole truth either. And then you're literally setting that as the name of your video and pretending it was said about China. You're technically not lying because it was said, but you're not telling the whole truth either. How do you not see this? You have literally just proven Liu Xin right. You have proven that CCTV or CGTN or whoever you're talking about needs to reach out internationally. You are proving that you are biased against China and will stop at nothing to do exactly what they're saying that you're doing. Rather than listening to the other side, you just demonize, misrepresent, and attack while playing scary music. I mean, have you seen this video? So other than China is trying to have its voice heard, which you hate, what is your point? Beijing has at times asked its journalists to act as intelligence gatherers. Oh, damn. CGTN journalists are spies. All right, let's see how Liu Xin is spying on the world. Actually, it does make sense now that I think about it. I mean, apparently she's fluent in Mandarin, English and French, and conversational in German and Turkish. Perfect for an international spy. This was the case for one Canadian Xinhua reporter. Sorry, I thought this video was about CGTN, and then later is about CCTV. Now it's about Xinhua? You know, these are different than each other, right? Mark Burry claims he was asked to report on a visit to Ottawa by the Dalai Lama in 2012, but not for broadcasts. Instead, the information was to be fed directly back to Beijing. No, oh, not Beijing. This is serious. Apparently, Beijing itself has asked a Canadian to spy on the Dalai Lama years ago. Now, I know you want me to just accept this as absolutely true without doing any checking at all, but let's just take a quick look at Mark Burry. Okay, he's a journalist who was paid for some Wikipedia editing for a senator. He won some awards, including something called The System That Killed Santa. All right, and oh, here we go. In his own words, seven years ago, the Dalai Lama came to Ottawa and Xinhua asked him to cover it. When I asked if the material was being used for a news article, Xinhua said yes. I don't know why you would ask a strange question like that, but all right. Then Mark was covering the press conference and someone from Xinhua told him to get a written transcript of the press conference. For some reason, Mark asked again if there was going to be a story, and this time the answer was no. I mean, it does seem a little convenient that he just happened to ask the strangest question in the world twice, but what do I know? So he quit and wrote an article saying that they were trying to get him to spy. Yep, that's the only thing that could have explained that. Rather than use actual spies to find out secret information, the Chinese government had a much better plan. They were going to hire a Canadian guy to spy on press conferences, which are the ultimate source of secret information. Smart. And this whole premise seems to be that he didn't feel they were going to run a story on the information because they said yes and then they said no. Now, I'm just being a little nosy here when I say this, but have you ever noticed that news agencies tend to report when there's an actual story? I mean, if the press conference was a boring run-of-the-mill one, there may not be a story there. But if the Dalai Lama was going to announce, I don't know, that his successor should be a hot chick, maybe that would be a story. Anyway, so then the video starts talking about a radio company, CRI, China Radio International, and it just literally copies a bunch of stuff from a Reuters article. Hey, isn't that intellectual property theft, ABC? So this map is just a copy of the Reuters map, which lists out radio stations backed by China, which broadcasts China-friendly programming. Oh my God, not China-friendly programming. And how dare China try to have radio programs internationally? What the hell is this? Fair? I mean, just because Australia does this too isn't important. Forget about Radio Australia. That does not exist. 
And please forget about Voice of America, the U.S. government-run TV and radio broadcasting network that's been operating for almost 80 years now. Forget about that. It's only broadcasting globally in 46 languages and has an influence on public opinion abroad regarding the United States and its leaders. And of course, none of this comes even close to BBC's worldwide networks. Yes, the state-run BBC. Forget that stuff. That's not what's important. What's important is that we block radio programs that are China-friendly. And then they've got some guy here who looks like he's in a bathroom or closet or something, and he adds more to the scary picture they're drawing. They have effectively monopolized the, the Chinese language airwaves. Really, there aren't too many uh, alternatives available if you're just turning on the radio. I did mention that the other state-run radio stations are broadcasting Chinese, right? All right, everyone, I just have to stop here and ask you guys something. It's something that I see again and again. People ask me sometimes if I don't like the West. No, that's not it at all. I want the West to improve and grow. I want relationships between the West and China to improve. There are ways that I think China can improve as well, but overall it's the West which is currently making the most mistakes. I want my country and its allies to progress past this colonialism mindset. I'm a progressive. And so here's what I want to ask. Does anyone else notice this colonialism mindset? I mean, here the West has a huge network of Chinese language radio programs that talk about China. No problem. But when China wants to join in on the conversation, suddenly China's doing something wrong. It's the same mentality when they quash rebellious colonies again and again. How dare these other race people fight back against what we're doing to them? Am I imagining this? I mean, is it just me or is this video suggesting that only the West should be able to represent China internationally? After that, the video just kind of runs out of steam. It says CGTN isn't effective because they don't get a lot of views on their YouTube channel. And then basically says China has to improve its international image. You mean like by having an international presence or... <laughs> Look, Australia, I know you don't have a big budget. Your GDP is in trouble. And on top of that, you've been spending time covering up the latest Australia doping controversy. Yes, the international image of Australia is fading. As you become known more and more for intellectual property theft, doping, and governmental bias, you'll no doubt want to get your voice heard internationally. You'll want to be fairly represented on the international stage. Hopefully, some other supremacist nation won't make a hit piece about you doing so. After all, that would be despicable. One piece of advice, ABC. Fire the China Watch guy and hire someone who's ever heard of China before. And if you use the Japanese imperial flag, one more time in a video about China, I swear to God, I won't stop releasing videos dismantling and destroying every bias and negative thing about China you ever say. I will make it my mission to bring your fascism down. Got it? <sighs> Thanks, everyone. See you.